five flash effects you can use in your next edit. Find effects like these and much more at my website, gsmixmedia.store. Link is in the description. Right now, I'm running the flash sale until the 1st of October for 30% off, no code required. We're gonna start by grabbing an adjustment clip and bringing it to the timeline. Click on the adjustment clip, hit Control D or Command D if you're on Mac. I'm gonna set mine for 10 frames. Then I'll make sure it's even in place in between my two clips. Then we're gonna open the clip in Fusion. In Fusion, hit Control Space. You're gonna look for a Luma key here. There are two of them. You're gonna grab the first one, hold Shift and hit Enter. They're bringing the Luma key here. And then you're gonna go back and look for a Brightness Contrast node. Holding Shift allows the Select Tools menu to remain open. Now I'll take the output of the Brightness Contrast node and connect it to the Media 1. It's gonna create a Merge node. I'm gonna rearrange this, and then I'm gonna take the output of the Media 1 and connect it to the input of the Luma key here. Go to the brightness contrast node and turn up the gain. The brightest part of your clip should be illuminated. If you go back to the Luma key here, you can adjust the contrast and expand to make it brighter or darker. You can also adjust the low end and the high end to further customize the look. I'm gonna bring the low end down and then adjust the whole bar by shifting over. This adds a little bit of a grainy texture to the clip. Go back into the brightness contrast node. We're gonna right click on gain, go to modify width. We're gonna modify with adjustment curves. So the modifiers tab, change source to duration, curve to easing, and set in and out to shine. You're gonna check the mirror box. You can leave it at five or you can turn it up higher if you want to. The higher, the brighter. You're gonna set your offset at one. By having mirror check, the scale of the flash will ramp up, hitting this apex at five, and then ramp back down towards the end of the adjustment clip. For the flash, I'm gonna turn my scale up to about 40. The strength of the scale will vary depending upon your clip and how bright that clip is. For the next flash effect, we start with another adjustment clip. Once again, set at 10 frames. I'm gonna open Infusion. Infusion, you're gonna hit Control Space. You're gonna search for a Gaussian blur, hold Shift and hit Enter. And then once again, we search for a brightness contrast. Connect the output of the media one to the Gaussian blur, and then the brightness contrast output connected to the media out. Click on the Gaussian blur and go into the inspector tab, go on right click and modify with Atom Curves. We're pretty much using the same setup as the previous effect. So source to duration, curve to easing, and in and out to shine. Once again, you're gonna check mirror and then move your playhead to the fifth frame, this right smack dab in the middle. That's where the that's where the effect is gonna hit its apex. You can go to the inspector tab and turn it up and turn it down the scale, depending on how much blur you want to add to the clip. I'm gonna turn mine down by halfway. And you're gonna repeat the same steps with the brightness contrast and the gain. Into one more time. Repetition is the father of learning. Right click, modify width, add them curves, go to modifier, source to duration, curve to easing, or in and out select shine. Scale, I'm gonna set mine's at 10. And then don't forget to check mirror. Once again, same setup, adjustment clip. Open Infusion, hit Control Space, and we're gonna look for a directional blur. So with this one, we're gonna modify the length. So right click, modify width, add them curves, modifier, and using the same setup from the previous. I'm gonna go to my scale, I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. With this one here, you can change the direction in which you want the blur to move. So if you go back to Tools, you can change the angle. So if you want more of a vertical blur, you hit 90 degrees, so the blur gonna come from up and down. Then of course, you can just move around to whatever direction you wanna send. Now, direction blur has its own built-in glow. So you can right click on it and modify it as well. Glow on this one gets quite bright, so I'm gonna go to my scale and I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. They have a flash effect with a motion blur. If you're enjoying the video, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, so you'll know when I upload new content. Then the next one is a studio only feature. We're gonna be using the lens flare node. So we control and space, type in lens, I'm gonna hold shift and add it to the pipeline. I'm gonna go to the inspector tab and change from default to this anamorphic look. Now I'll make sure my playhead is in the first frame of my clip. I'm gonna go over here to position, set a keyframe and I'm gonna move it on the x-axis off screen. Now I just go to my last frame and move again once again on the x-axis to the other side. And that's just gonna animate it across the screen. Now I'm gonna keyframe the global scaling. So I'm gonna right click, modify width. We're gonna use the same setup. This way, when you get to the middle, the lens will be at its brightest, creating a transition and then it'll ease back off. And if you want it brighter, you can just turn up the scale. So right at frame five, I want it to pretty much almost overtake the footage. You go back to tools and go down here to global saturation. You can change the saturation right now. It, ma it naturally matches like, the purple hue of their first clip. So I'm gonna actually turn it over to kind of give more of a generic white look to it. So then, so it's still overall matching and it's not throwing the clip off too much. You can also make further alterations to the brightness and the defocus. For this next one, I have another adjustment clip that's 10 frames long, but I only have it over the back end of my clip. We're gonna create this camera flash effect. I'm gonna go to the effects panel and I believe this is available in the free version as well. We're gonna get this DSR. DSLR overlay. If it's not available in the free version of DaVinci, you can go to like Google and just find a camera overlay image that you can use for free. I'm gonna go over to the inspector tab and the effects and I'm gonna change overlay to white just since this clip is so dark and it kind of bring it out a little bit. Then I'm going to Fusion. The medium one selected, I'll go to my toolbar, select the brightness contrast node and it should automatically add it to your pipeline. With my playhead in the first frame, 
I'm going to set a keyframe on the gain and saturation. I'm going to turn saturation all the way down to zero. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to turn gain all the way up to five. Then I go to my last frame. I'm going to set this back at zero. Well, set it back at one on saturation and set gain back to zero. Well, back to one as well. <laughs> Open up the spline tab. I'm going to uncheck my saturation to make sure the gain is the only one selected. Select all frames, right click, ease. I'm going to select ease. I'm going to choose out cubic. Then I uncheck gain and go back to saturation. Select all frames, right click, and then choose in cubic. This gives us the camera flash effect, but also gives us a subtle roll off of the effect. Back in the edit tab, if you want to, you can adjust the the adjustment clip will be longer. And then adjust this top handle here to make the camera filter kind of ease off. So between the clips, you get the camera flash. And then towards the end, the overlay will fade away. And there you have it. Five flash effects you can use in your next video edit. You can find effects like these and more on my website, gsmixmedia.store, where I'm currently having a 30% off sale. No code needed. Link is in the description.